Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for GWBC Radio's Open for Business. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of GWBC Open for Business, and this is going to be a good one. Today on the show, we have Terry Lawson Adams with Ellsworth Healthcare Staffing. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about Ellsworth Healthcare Staffing. How are you serving folks? Ellsworth Healthcare Staffing, we are a staffing agency. We staff clinicians. Um, that's RNs, nurse, nurse practitioners, licensed practical nurses, um, certified medical assistants, as well as physical therapists. Um, we are um, locally owned. We located in Decatur, Georgia, and we send people to work at any place in the city that needs health care um, clinicians or help with um, their health care services. Now, what's the backstory? How did you get involved in this line of work? Well, it's very interesting. Um, my previous In my previous life, I did the political consultant, campaign management, and community affairs. And um, a couple of years ago, my mother fell and she was ill and she'd gone to the hospital. And um, prior to her falling, I kept thinking, I need to do something. I want to do something where I can help people, where I can serve and make a difference in the community. But I didn't know what that that would be. And after she fell and was in the hospital, um, we had a lot of days where we had difficulty getting nurses to come in, trying to find a nurse. They were short staff. And I remember complaining and asking to speak to the director of nursing and escalated it up. And at the time, you know, they said, well, we're sorry. You know, we we're, we're short. And I said, well, can you call a staffing agency? And they said, well, it's not that easy. We have to go through what's called a managed service provider, which I had no idea what that was. And she said, um, you know, we really apologize. So, of course, that did make me feel better. And I saw a lady in a room next to her who also was calling for help. And she had no family members there to go and try to find a nurse. And I sat, that e- sat there that evening and thought, you know, this is a need. Um, you know, something needs to be done. But kind of let it go, move forward. Um a couple of weeks and she'd gone to rehab and at the rehab facility they also were short of staff and I remember complaining and going to the executive director saying call the staffing agency and they said well we don't have any one that we can call and so after that I thought you know I did some research I thought you know what maybe this is where I can help and make a difference so I decided you know did research and um got a consultant and started Ellsworth Healthcare staff and thought, okay, it can help not only facilities run smoothly, but help families, give them peace of mind and help the patients as well. Now, when you're um, starting a staffing agency, it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing, right? Like you need to have um, the healthcare people that do the work, but you also need the clients that want to hire you to have healthcare people to do the work, right? Like, so how do you, at the same time, build up both of those groups? Was that difficult? It was very difficult because when we first started, we thought, okay, we should always have the people first. And we want to differentiate ourselves from everybody else by saying, you can call us. And when you call us, we will have staff that are qualified. We're going to make sure that we've already credentialed them. We're going to make sure they're drug tested background check, and ready to go. So we started hiring, hiring like crazy. Then we went to look for a client. By the time we got clients, the clinicians were gone. So it was trying to get, you know, that balance. And it's always hard to get a balance. But yeah, we struggled in the beginning um, with that formula and learned that um, it wasn't the best formula because we were hiring lots of people and, drug testing them and background checking and just lost a lot of money. Right. Because you were doing that and they ended up working for somebody else. And then, so you invested in them, but you never got the payoff. 
never got the payout um, because I I did that before we got the clients thinking they would be sitting and waiting, not really thinking that the one sitting and waiting to go to work. They're ready right. to go to work, you know, immediately. So that was difficult. That was um, really difficult in the beginning, but we've learned from our mistakes. So now uh, does, has your client changed? Does the person hiring you to find these practitioners, has that person changed um, like through COVID? Is it a different person like pre-pandemic than now? Yes, it has changed. Um, prior to COVID, we were also doing home care. And when COVID hit, um, we had, we had, a, uh, we were doing something with the county, one of the counties, and they stopped everyone from going into um, the homes. So, and then our private home care clients, they were all scared. So that kind of stopped completely. Um, some of our assisted living facilities had a high rate of COVID um, cases in their facility. So it was hard to keep people in their facilities, um, workers, as well as just um, their residents. And so they didn't need us as much, but it was very interesting because we started getting calls from the oddest places that wanted clinicians, wanted nurses to do temperature checks, first aid. Um, we had requests for vaccinations and we also had a lot of schools that needed help. So our client did change. Now, how has kind of being part of GWBC helped you in this uh, adventure of yours? It, GWBC has been a tremendous help for us. Um, you know, they do, they offer lots of trainings and those trainings are really, really helpful. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. And I'm glad someone told me about it because I didn't know anything about them. And I didn't realize all of the help and support um, and resources that's available through the organization. Now, um, as you kind of grow in your business, what has been kind of the most rewarding part? It seems like every day you're helping somebody, um, you know, kind of get through a difficult time. It's, you know, that's the thing about this business. It can be hard, but it's very rewarding. Um, and I, because it's always rewarding one to even get, help people find jobs. Some people are looking for jobs and they can't find them. Of course, well, pre-COVID, now jobs are everywhere, but helping people find jobs, helping facilities that are struggling, that need help, um, that's been rewarding, knowing that we're helping them, giving them a peace of mind, but also the patients um, or the people that they serve, even schools, knowing that we're helping to try to keep them, the, the students safe and administration safe at the schools. All of that has been very rewarding for me. Now, because of the pandemic, did that force you to do things differently? Like maybe some of this remote, um, people working remote, did that hurt you yeah. in some ways and help you in other ways? Like maybe now you're able to interview people at uh, faster and uh, using technology than maybe than having them come in in person and do an interview. Like has that changed at all? Yes. Prior to the pandemic, we did all of our work recruiting um in person and i always felt like i wanted to see people i wanted to know and get a feel for them because it's kind of hard to get a feel for someone virtually and always wanted to know if people are representing now for healthcare staffing we've seen them we know how they are we kind of got a feel i mean you never really know someone just from meeting them once or twice but it's better than doing it virtually i thought uh, but then the pandemic hit and it's like, okay, well, we can't do this. We have to do it virtually. So we started doing our recruiting virtually. We do interviews virtually. Um, and we're able to interview more people. And we're able to, we're even doing stuff outside of the metro Atlanta now. We're looking at doing stuff out of state um, because we realize that we can do things virtually and we don't necessarily have to meet people in person. Now, the difficulties we had that um, also increase. Um, I guess our technology to make sure we can onboard people virtually, but it, it, it's helped us. Yeah. It's one of those things where there's a, a lot of negative obviously, but then some silver linings happen and 
maybe this will enable you to to grow in areas that you didn't even anticipate. Correct. Because I never thought about staffing at warehouses or even at schools at the time. And here we are. So now so, yeah. being being a woman certified business, is that something that opens some doors in areas that maybe people who aren't taking advantage of that opportunity are missing out on? Yes, I um, I think so, because there are um, some organizations and bigger companies, they have to have a certain spin with women owned businesses. And if you're not certified, um, then you can't, you know, they want to make sure you have certification. So if you're not certified and you're a woman owned business and you're just saying you're woman owned, they need the certification. So it does help and give you an advantage. So how does, uh, as we end this year and look into next year, um, are you pretty optimistic or you think it's going to be tough? What does next year look like for you? I'm optimistic. Um, I'm optimistic that we're going to keep growing and growing and, um, you know, being a woman on business, um, I think, and with all of the um, programming and training that we get, I think it's going to help us as well and position us to continue to grow. Now, are you constantly looking for, uh, I would imagine it's twofold, clients and also um, the healthcare practitioner, right? You need the worker and you need the clients that need the workers. So is it constantly kind of looking for those folks? That's correct. Yep. We have two clients, our the workforce as well as the facilities that we service. So yes, if, we're always looking. So if somebody, if they're a practitioner or if they're uh, somebody who needs health care, what, where is the, what's a website that they can go and uh, ch- check you out? We are at um, www.ehstaffing.com. That's E as an elephant, H as in Henry, staffing.com. Right. And that stands for Ellsworth Healthcare Staffing. Terry, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing such important work and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on GWBC Open for Business.